So in this video, I introduce uh, F-tests for a model coming from the perspective of the previous video where I talked about F-tests for comparing a full and a reduced model. A little bit of background. Uh, sum to squares total is equal to sum to squares regression plus sum to squares error. And this is a formula that I introduce in uh, other videos. The setting for this video is that we have a full model where we estimate y hat as um, some linear function of a number of variables and coefficients. From this model, we can get a sum of the squares error for the full model, which is equal to uh, summing over um, our individual errors for each observation when we use this model to predict their scores on y. Square those, sum them up, and that's the sum of scores error. And this model also has a number of parameters, which is, in this case, p from here. Actually, it would be p plus 1 because of p intercept uh, beta 0. And we also have, in this case, there's no um, explicit reduced model, but implicitly the reduced model is a model where we estimate y by um, just the mean in y. This model also has a sum of scores error, which is the same as above where we look at the errors on each individual observation, square them, sum them up. But this time our predictions are the mean for the y's. So the sum of squared error for this uh, special reduced model ends up being the same as sum of the squares total. Um, and this model also has uh, a number of parameters. In this case, it's just one. We're only estimating the mean. With this in mind, we can uh, conduct an f-test to test a null hypothesis that all parameters in the full model are zero. To conduct this test, we can compute uh, an obtained f by comparing the sum of the squares error for the reduced model to the sum of the squares error for the full model per additional degree of freedom or per additional parameter. and relative to the average sum of the squares error per parameters in the full model, per uh, degrees of freedom for the full model, which are the number of observations minus the number of parameters in the full model. The interesting thing is that by this formula introduced in the background, the numerator here becomes just the sum of the squares regression for the full model. And the denominator stays the same, so we have the number of parameters in the full model, which is p plus 1, minus 1, um, and the minus 1 comes from the number of parameters in the reduced model, divided by uh, the sums of squares error from the full model. Um, per degree of freedom in the full model, which is n minus the number of parameters in the full model. And then, as usual, this obtained f value 
um, comes from an F distribution with this time P uh, numerator degrees of freedom and N minus PF uh, denominator degrees of freedom. And while I uh, discuss hypothesis testing more in depth in another video, it's safe to say that this obtained F statistic comes from an F distribution uh, where we've defined an alpha, which is the probability of obtaining this F value. Uh, if, in this case, it would be if uh, for each parameter in the model, it was equal to zero. So for all of the parameters in the model, they're equal to zero. And that defines a critical value. And then um, this determines a rejection region versus a region where we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. So in this context, rejecting the null hypothesis would mean that there's evidence that at least one of the parameters in the full model are non-zero. Um, in another video, I discuss more in depth the kind of pros and cons of different approaches to hypothesis testing. But a main weakness of this approach is that you, you don't know which parameter is driving the, the effect if you do uh, indeed reject the null hypothesis.